Hello guys, today I want to make some explanation based on my tweet, so expand on a tweet based on this thought. From time to time I see people complaining that Laravel is moving too fast and it's hard to catch up with all the new versions. But I think what these people mean is two things. First, version numbers grow up, so every week they have 10.4, 10.5 and stuff like that, so it seems that it's growing too fast. And also, what they mean actually is the ecosystem around Laravel, which is optional. Things like Jetstream, Octane, Pest, Inertia or whatever, which is around Laravel. It's not that Laravel moves too fast, maybe the whole ecosystem and the web dev scene moves too fast and Laravel is just trying to keep up. So in this video I want to quickly run through the changes which in my opinion were the most significant since like Laravel 5.4 or 5.5, which could cause confusion, debates, and they did. So what actually changed since Laravel 5.5? To start the research on that, I've opened probably the oldest repository of Laravel daily that I could find from 2017. It was LMS based on one of the earlier versions of our quick admin panel. And this is Laravel code from Laravel 5.4. Is it that different in Laravel 10? There's still controller, show method, maybe a few more helpers related to auth appeared, but stuff related to eloquent, where statements, relationships, all the basic part stayed the same. And this is just one silly example, but what I mean is the whole MVC structure, the whole core of Laravel hasn't changed since like Laravel 4. But still, let's briefly emphasize some of the significant changes. While going through all the release notes and changes since Laravel 5.5, I didn't notice anything significant until Laravel 7, which introduced Blade components, which had some confusion at the time. So X something, people who are not familiar were reading X something in the blade files and thought like why would you need to use components and for quite a while they didn't understand that especially when later they saw Jetstream and Laravel Breeze using those X something so people unfamiliar with blade components were confused that they were a required thing now which isn't the case it's totally optional I have a separate video of me being confused myself at the time and then trying to convince you and myself that blade components are okay and useful so I will link that video in the description below. So first I would mention is Blade Components. The next significant thing that was introduced in Laravel 7 was Laravel Sanctum. It caused some confusion because there was Laravel Passport before created in 5.4 from what I remember for authentication. Then there was Laravel Sanctum, which previously in the first version was called differently. It was Laravel Airlock and then Taylor changed the name because of some trademark confusion and then everyone was like, so what do we use now? Should we stick to Passport or Sanctum? What is the difference? And then only a few years later, everyone kind of settled down on Sanctum being the default behavior, which is great for SPA and authentication with mobile and front-end. And Passport became like, if you really need the OAuth thing and you really know what you're doing, then you need Passport in some cases. So for Sanctum, it also took a while to become the standard, which also led to some confusion along the way. But probably the biggest significant change was Laravel 8. And I've mentioned that already, where Laravel changed the auth starter kits from previously Laravel UI to Laravel Jetstream. And then a bit later, Laravel Breeze was released as a simple version of Jetstream. And it caused huge amount of debate, including myself. I was pretty vocal about that and against that change because, in my opinion, it wasn't communicated properly. So Jetstream and Breeze are both great. But at the time, many people were used to have make auth, which was in Laravel 5 point something, then it moved into separate Laravel UI, so everyone got used to use Laravel UI, which was on Bootstrap, and I assume many people got used to Bootstrap without even knowing it's Bootstrap, because it was generated by Laravel, and now Jetstream kind of turned things around. Instead of Bootstrap, we have Tailwind. On top of Laravel, we have Livewire or Inertia, which many of developers weren't familiar with. Also, again, getting back to my previous point, they used Blade Components, and not every one of developers were using that. So basically, it was kind of a mini revolution, stating that Jetstream now is a default starter kit instead of Laravel UI. In reality, it's not the case. Jetstream is just one of the options, and then Taylor listened to the community and provided Laravel Breeze as a simpler version without Livewire or Inertia, 
but still on Tailwind and then later communicated that they still support Laravel UI on Bootstrap and they still do until this day. So Laravel UI new versions still appear. They are not mentioned in the documentation anymore. Sorry for my shaky voice. So I'm recording the third video in a row. Anyway, so it caused confusion, but not because the tools were bad, but because of not clear communication and distinction between those new starter kits. But looking back, that move from Bootstrap to Tailwind, which caused a big part of that confusion, led to the community actually switching, many people in the community switching to Tailwind. And now I actually ask my audience on Twitter, what CSS framework do you use? And these are the results. In my audience, 1,000 people voted, almost 60% are Tailwind, 25 are still on Bootstrap. So Bootstrap is still widely used, but the majority of my audience, and I think it's pretty similar in Laravel audience in general, use Tailwind, which means Tailwind is good, fine, and useful tool. And I'm planning to have a separate video of kind of a showdown showcase bootstrap and Tailwind kind of convincing people who haven't tried Tailwind to at least try. So my point with that is that at the time Laravel 8 with starter kit felt like a revolution and changing and breaking everything that people were using before. But over the years, as things died down, Everyone got used to it. Most of the people understood why Breeze and Jetstream were released and it's not a big deal anymore. So this is probably one of the best examples why we shouldn't react that negatively to changes. We just need to spend an hour or two reading the docs and then things around the docs, explanation why it was released, and maybe you would find a new awesome tool to work with in the future instead of sticking to your older tools. And finally, the latest significant change I found in Laravel 8 or 9 is changing to Vite. In Laravel 9.19, which is not even major version, it was kind of along the way as a minor release every week, they decided to change the default asset bundler to Vite. And this is the tweet by Taylor. And again, in my personal opinion, Vite is great, but the way it was communicated wasn't really aligned with the people who didn't want to use Vite and didn't even know what Vite is. So now they needed to relearn how to compile the assets and maybe deal with some bugs along the way. So imagine you are a Laravel developer, you wake up one day, you create a new Laravel project and then it works differently. So you run npm run dev and you see the screen that you haven't seen before. And again, it's not about Vite versus Webpack, Laravel Mix and all of that. All those tools are great and Vite is great. And you can find some articles of why it is better and why the change was made. But it's about the communication of that change to the developers who didn't really know about that change coming. So in my personal opinion, again, personal opinion, that change to Vite should have been moved to Laravel 10, to the major version with communication upfront, or maybe using that as an option in Laravel 9.19, like a flag Laravel new and then installer with Vite versus Laravel mix, something like that. So prepare people for the change. Because what happened in reality, the community had to kind of take over and write a lot of articles, videos, explanations, and tweets. Why Vite? what that VIT is, how can you adopt the VIT, or how you can switch from VIT as a default to your previously beloved Webpack and Laravel mix. And I was one of those people. I have a video of Laravel 919, which has 45,000 views at the moment and 144 comments. So it was quite a polarizing discussion at the time. So yeah, this was probably the most significant change I found in the later Laravel version, Laravel 9. Apart from that, everything I've noticed since since Laravel 5, those were pretty minor changes in my opinion, which caused you to change something, but it could be easily found in the docs and change in like 30 minutes or so. So things like using HTTP client versus Guzzle or curl, things like changing dates to casts, some of them are small changes, some of them are totally optional. So it's not about Laravel moving too fast. Again, it's about additional tools to Laravel, so you could adopt Laravel, Livewire, Inertia, Pest, or whatever you want, but if you want to. If you don't want to, your good old Laravel 5 code would still work the same way. And I've been upgrading quite a lot of projects recently with and without Laravel Shift. So if the project is on Laravel 8, the upgrade to Laravel 9 and 10 was almost invisible in minutes. Laravel 5 something to 10 requires a bit more work, but still in terms of syntax, in terms of core MVC, not much have changed. Would you agree with me? This video is kind of explanation of my philosophy, kind of busting the myth in a way, partly, that Laravel is moving too fast. 
the numbers are moving fast, the whole ecosystem is moving fast. But if you don't have time and don't want to move along and read all the news, you are still fine. Laravel will still be a good framework for you. What do you think? I think we have something to discuss in the comments. So let's do exactly that and see you guys in other videos.